السلام علیکم ایوری ون آج ہم کر رہے ہیں پیپٹک السر ڈیزیز اے ویری ویری ہائی ٹاپک سلیبس میں اٹس مینشنڈ انڈر ہیئر اینڈ ان رینک آرڈر اٹس پری مچ ایٹ دا ٹاپ رائٹ انڈر اپر جی آئی ٹی بلیڈ وی ہیو ایچ پائی لورائی اینڈ ایسوسیٹڈ پیپٹک السر ڈیزیز آل رائٹ سو لیٹس گیٹ ان ٹو دس السرز کین بی فاؤنڈ ان دا لوور سافکس دا اسٹمک دا ڈو جنم دا جے جنم اف ایٹ از سرجیکلی این ایسٹموس ٹو دا اسٹمک اینڈ دا آئلیم اف دیر از اے میکلز ڈائیورٹیکولم پریزنٹ دیر Um, the most common sites, however, and the ones that you need to remember are the first part of the duodenum and the lesser curvature of the stomach. Oops, what did I do? All right. So the causes of peptic ulcer disease are H. pylori, NSAIDs, and smoking. Um, you need to remember these three causes mainly. Um, the clinical features are recurrent abdominal pain, Um, there are three specific features that you need to look out for. Localization to the epigastrium, relationship to food, and episodic occurrence. Um, in 40% of patients, there is occasional vomiting, and if there is persistent daily vomiting, then it's probably a gastric outlet obstruction. Um, for, for example, it may be a carcinoma or it may be a stricture that is formed there. In about one third of patients, the history is less specific, especially in the elderly or those taking NSAIDs. Um, pain is absent or there's very slight epigastric unease. Sometimes the only symptoms are anorexia and nausea or early satiety. Um, a silent ulcer is one which is definitely present, but there's no pain or symptoms and it presents anemia from chronic blood loss, um, which is obviously uh, undetected for so many years, or hematomesis, um, Uh, or acute perforation. So until a complication doesn't develop or the patient is uh, presenting to you with fatigue and anemia and weight loss, um, then you might suspect uh, there to be a, to, uh, for there to be an ulcer. Um, there may be recurrent acute, acute bleeding without ulcer pain and we've already look at, looked at upper GI bleed and how to handle that. Um, in general, history is a very poor predictor of the presence of an ulcer. And so while history may be important, Uh, to diagnose it, you cannot always rely on history only. Um, now, this is a very interesting and important thing to remember. Um, if the ulcer is in the gastric area, um, the pain ha it happens right after the food or in anticipation of food uh, because of the release of the acid. Um, if the ulcer is in the duodenum, the pain happens uh, Hours after eating, um, it is relieved by food, which acts as a buffer. Um, we know that um, an alkaline substance is released in the duodenum to, um, to buffer the, uh, uh, the acid coming from the stomach. And so when we do eat food, uh, that alkaline uh, substance that's released um, acts as a buffer. And so the pain of the duodenal ulcer is relieved by food. And the pain is the most when the stomach is empty. For example, at night, so a person has not had food for ages or before breakfast um, or like in between meals, then the pain is most extreme. Investigations. Um, the The preferred and the best uh, investigation is endoscopy. And we're also going to take a biopsy to rule out any malignancies. And of course, we're going to test for H. pylori infection. And the breath test and the fecal antigen test are the most specific and they're the best tests to be used. Um, I've attached a table from our textbook, Davidson's Medicine, um, in which we have the non-invasive and the invasive tests. Um, so it's better if we can just read through it real quick. You can do serology, a breath test, and a fecal antigen test for the non-invasive and the invasive ones are um, histology. Uh, well, obviously you're taking a biopsy, so you're gonna be doing histology, rapid urease test, and microbiological culture, uh, which is considered um, gold standard in some cases, but invasive tests are usually not preferred. Um, the management in peptic ulcer disease aims to uh, relieve symptoms, induce healing, and prevent recurrence. The H. pylori eradication therapy is one of the most high yield, uh, highly asked, and just it's just the one therapy that you can never forget. Um, so uh, the classic therapy is with three medications. Uh, PPIs, uh, omeprazole is given 
a 20 milligram BD, uh, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. And if a patient is allergic to penicillins or for any reason cannot take penic penicillins, we give them metronidazole, 500 milligram BD. In some textbooks, it's it mentioned 400 milligram BD. Um, so yes, so I'm not sure about this, but it's 400 to 500 milligram BD um, for at least seven days. And the ideal is 10 to 14 days. And so we we'll just go ahead and remember 10 to 14 days. Um, the common side effects of H. pylori eradication therapy are diarrhea, um, flushing and vomiting when taken with alcohol. Uh, this is specific to metronidazole. Um, nausea, vomiting. So just remember nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and then abdominal cramps, headache, and rash. Um, if there is resistance uh, to clorithromycin uh, of more than 15% in a certain area, then we use the quadruple regime, which is PPI plus bismuth substrate plus metronidazole plus tetracycline. This is given for 10 to 14 days. And even if the clorithromycin re resistance is low in a certain area, we use the quadruple therapy as a second line for the failure of the initial therapy. So, um, if a patient has been giving the H. pylori eradication therapy and the symptoms are not going away and the patient is not improving, then we're gonna go for the quadruple therapy. If suppose both of these therapies fail, um, then we're gonna go for the rescue therapy and the rescue therapy is levofloxacin plus PPIs plus clarithromycin. Um, what are the indications of H. pylori eradication therapy? Now again, I've attached a table from our textbook and the indications are extremely easy to remember. Uh, peptic ulcer, external marginal zone lymphomas of malt type, and we know these also occur because of H. pylori infection. Family history of gastric cancer, a previous resection for gastric cancer, H. pylori positive dyspepsia, long-term NSAID or low-dose aspirin users, um, chronic proton pump inhibitor users, um, and then we have certain extra gastric disorders. And where it's not indicated is uh, GERD and asymptomatic people without gastric cancer risk factors. So make sure it, just because if a patient is uh, presenting with retrosternal uh, chest pain, if there's a burning sensation and it's uh, it is probably GERD, then don't give them H. pylori eradication therapy. But obviously the best way is to perform an endoscopy and rule out an ulcer um, and then plan the management. NSAIDs and H. pylori are independent causative factors uh, for peptic ulcer disease. And whenever we start a long-term NSAID treatment, um, we have to ensure that there's no pre-existing H. pylori infection. And uh, so we will perform uh, the breath test or the fecal antigen test. And um, if the patient does have an infection of, with H. pylori, we give them eradication therapy to reduce the risk of peptic ulcer disease because we do not want NSAIDs and H. pylori to be bunched together and be causing ulcers. Um, we give a co-prescription of proton pump inhibitors with NSAIDs um, if the NSAID treatment is obviously going to be used uh, long term. Um, for low dose um, aspirin, uh, it may not be required, but in most cases we do give proton pump inhibitors with long term NSAID treatment. Um, and then we are going to concentrate on the general measures. So we've given the patient um, their eradication therapy. We do not want recurrence of this ulcer. So we're going to ask them to stop cigarette smoking. Uh, we're going to ask them to stop taking aspirin and NSAIDs. Um, uh, it, obviously, we can't ask them to stop if they're taking it for another disease. But uh, a lot of a lot of the times people are habitual and they tend to take aspirin and NSAIDs for the simplest of things, uh, maybe like a headache or anything else. So to just be popping these pills. Um, we don't want that. Um, they are allowed alcohol in moderation and there is no special dietary advice. This was what was written in the textbook, but from my practical experience, I've noticed that doctors, um, they ask patients not to eat excessively spicy foods. Uh, I guess perhaps uh, that reduces the irritation in some way. Uh, I do not know. Then it's the maintenance therapy. After a successful H. pylori um, eradication therapy has been given, no maintenance therapy is required. However, a minority may require it uh, since uh, they're uh, chronically using NSAIDs or for any other reason, uh, but they require low dose proton pump inhibitors as we've already discussed. Um, now, the complications of peptic ulcer disease are really important and you need to remember all of them. Uh, 
perforation. A perforation can occur, which leads to peritonitis, and uh, we're, we're going to study this extensively in surgery and how to deal with it. Um, this is a high yield uh, thing to remember. The interior wall of the first part of the duodenum has a tendency to perforate. Um, then we're going to look at gastric outlet obstruction due to uh, the peptic ulcer disease uh, there or uh, just uh, with other factors or with similar cause, uh, causal factors. There may be a cancer uh, or a stricture and so this will cause obstruction and this will also be discussed in surgery, how to manage it and treat it. Then we have bleeding and we've already looked at upper GI bleed. Um, the posterior wall of the first part of the duodenum has a tendency to bleed. And so we need to remember that the anterior wall of the first part of the duodenum has a tendency to perforate and the posterior wall has a tendency to bleed. Um, what are the indications for surgery in peptic ulcer? The emergency indication, the perforation and hemorrhage, and the elective ones are gastric outflow obstruction, persistent ulceration despite adequate medical therapy, and recurrent ulcer following gastric surgery. So this was it for today. Um, I found a lot of past paper questions for peptic ulcer disease, but I've only put in a few. So I will stop this video here and you can go ahead and pause at the questions and check out, uh, check them out.